Und sie ist es. Wir lesen hier die Korte Worship, wir lesen von Psalm 46, Vers 1 und Vers 3 und Vers 7. Gott ist unser Refug und Strength, ein sehr präsent Hilfe in Trouble. Deshalb werden wir nicht mehr fliehen, weil die Erde wird gehen und die Mountain wird gehen in der Mitte der See. Weil die Wälder sich gehen und wir trauen, weil die Mountain sich schicken, wir versuchen sie auf. Die Lord of Hosts ist mit uns. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So with that uh, wonderful assurance and reassurance from the Lord, let us all rise uh, to hear our praying him. A mighty fortress is our refuge. Let us uh, meditate on this hymn upon the Lord.
Thank you for being our coaches of strength, our encouragement, Lord. We thank you, Lord, uh, for hearing our prayers. We thank you, Lord, for uh, other blessings and for providing for us. And uh, most of all, we thank you, Lord, for the gift of life, give us salvation to our Lord and uh, Savior Jesus Christ. And Lord, we come before you, Lord, we again ask uh, for your encouragement, for your strength, uh, as we uh, strive to live the life that is pleasing before you. Uh, help us, Lord, uh, to open our hearts to you, to confess our sins unto you, and ask, Lord, uh, that you will guide us, guide us to change our ways, uh, that we can be a uh, living testimony to, to the others. And Lord, uh, most of all, we uh, ask, Lord, that come to uh, lead us, to encourage us, and to be sure that many more will get to, to hear of your name, to receive your gift of life, let us reach out to them, and many more can come to know you, to hear your words, and be part of your, your salvation, Lord. We pray all this in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to
Please rise with me to pray. At the close of this day of rest, we come before you, our Lord, our God, our Redeemer, and our Heavenly Father, we praise seeing us through another week and another month. We want to thank you, o Lord, for every day that has passed, for every hour that we have passed through. And looking back, O Lord, our hearts are filled with thanksgiving and gratefulness for if it was not for your grace for your mercy we would not have survived the day and all that have came in our way and so we stand before you, O Father, remembering and recognizing that it is you who has kept us going. It is you who has been our shield, our strength. It is you who has fed us same time who has protected us. The many prayers that you have mercifully heard and answered, the many needs that you have lovingly met. O oh Lord, when as we have read in the scriptures, despite all that you have done, Many a times our hearts were turned away from you. Our feet stray from the path that you have set before us. Our hearts and our minds have indulged in sins that were hidden. Our hands had rushed to do things that were not pleasing before you. And in the same mode that we praise, Lord, we have cursed, we have sinned. So we ask you now as we stand before you, that with great soul searching, we ask thee, O Father, to have mercy upon us, to forgive us, sanctify us. And even as we begin a new week, a new month, we pray for thy grace, we pray for thy help, for vain is the help of man. We are weak in the face of our adversaries and all that we may throw at us, but we are strong in Christ for which we thank you. And so help us, O oh Lord, in this week as we step forward to face the world, to do we indulge in the challenges that are before us, that Lord, we will set our hearts and minds on thee and thy word. When as you did instruct Joshua, saying, be strong and courageous, to meditate your word and keep at it. And this day, Lord, I pray that every soul that has stepped into your heart, Lord, I pray that they may find me to be true and faithful in all the lives 
commitments and ways and challenges. And as they have come, O oh Lord, I pray that they may be children who hear your voice and walk in the way. Touch anyone who is not well this evening. May we give peace to troubled hearts. May there be persons who are weighed down by issues, problems in life. May we accept your invitation to come and lay our burdens at your feet. Oh, teach us to be people of faith. May you, Lord, teach us to believe and not doubt your words towards us. Oh, Lord, bless us, we pray, this evening with your presence. Pray that you bless your people wherever they are this evening. That they will remember that it is your day, that they may seek you in worship. We pray, O oh Lord, regard to this coronavirus, you have safeguarded us thus far as your people and as the nation of Singapore. We pray for your continued grace. We pray for our neighboring countries and, and countries around the world where we are suffering from this effect of COVID. I pray for your mercy that the world may wake up, wake up to see thee, Lord, and to seek thee. This evening, Lord, I pray, speak to us through your holy word. Feed us with the eternal truth that we may be rooted and built up in Christ Jesus. That we may know the truth that sets us free, Lord. Speak to us, we pray. Sanctify this hour. Sanctify me and use me as your instrument. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Jesus. The scripture text for today brings a conclusion to the Sermon on the Mount series which we have been looking at for the past few months. Our Lord Jesus Christ, when He first taught these things on the Sermon on the Mount, he taught it with an eye of compassion and he saw a great multitude. And at the end of it, he finishes it strong with a challenge to the people. And here, the master storyteller tells us again another parable which is an earthly story with heavenly meanings. And so here he talks about builders and building. So here he speaks about two kinds of builders, as you see in the picture, two kinds of builders, right? Um, people who are involved in building something. So two men embarking on a similar project, building of houses that is. So we ask why did they embark on such a project? It's because they saw the need of it. They saw the good of it. House as a place of shelter from the elements of nature, sun, rain, and winds, and also protection from uh, whatever is around them, and a place of future stability to build a family, to raise children, etc., etc. So on observation, the first thing we are to note that these two men uh, seem to have equals, uh, seem to be equally skilled and equipped for this project. 
And their desire is accompanied by building skills and determination. These two men started, persevered, and finished their structure. And so we see two types of houses, uh, beautiful houses. On the outset, the finished product seemed to lack nothing, since everything is perfect, you know, and uh, tick every box of approval of what a house should be. Uh, we live in HDB flat, so we do not really have such houses, but we see these houses uh, around us. This Two guys, um, Buddy and Doug, right? They are world-known uh, bakers, right? And uh, they excel in in the baking business and never shy away from the challenge of being uh, a baking custom-made cakes, be it uh, on any occasion, theme, or size. So, wanting to bring the skills to another level, uh, Buddy and Doug were roped into uh, to seven rounds of cake baking competition. So the themes vary from um, uh, Star Wars to anything that the organizers ask them to do. And assisted by the uh, team, they rise to the challenge uh, to bake cakes. And uh, these are the type of cakes they bake, right, of different things. Um, and so when you look at that finished product, it was so real and sometimes life-size as it is that people forgot that this was actually cakes that people could eat. And so it was with the builders who built the houses, right? Um, it was a finished project, uh, it was a good project and up to this point, it seems that the builders are much alike but in reality, uh, the builders differed both in work and character. And the outward building could not, um, at this point, testify to what kind of builders they were, what kind of character they had, and so forth. Till the moment of truth literally hit them hard by way of storm, as the Lord says in the parable. And so the storms come, battering the houses, the builders built, and we know storms mean there's rain, there's winds, strong winds, and also flooding. And these elements certainly battered both the houses without any uh, partiality or prejudice. They say, oh, this house is built by this person, so uh, I will be, I'll be milder in my storm. Oh, this house is built by this guy. I was not doing right, so I'll be, uh, be more harsh on him. No, the storm comes, uh, balanced, and it hits them hard. And at the end of the test, this happens. The Lord says, one house stands, and the other house crumbles. And see the picture of that man? His house is crumbled. He's putting his hand to the forehead, and he's probably sorrowing. And the Lord tells us the reason to the contrasting results of both houses when they were battered by the storm. If you read in um, verses uh, 25 and then verses 26 and 7, our Lord says this. He says, the house that was battered and did not fall, it was because it was founded upon a rock. But in the house that was battered and fell, it was built upon the sand. So it is one house that is built literally on rock that you see on the picture, and the other literally built upon sand. So that's the kind of houses that were built. And the Lord points out this, that the choice of foundation for the respective houses reveals one man to be wise and the other foolish. See, my dear sisters, for any construction project, right, soil testing is important. 
So in testing, in testing the soil, it determines whether the kind of housing project or building project can actually be carried on. Is the soil good enough? Is it firm enough? You know, so soil testing needs to be done. And when the soil testing is done, experience will tell the builders that uh, whether they can carry on with that project or not. And so these uh, two guys who built the house, and particularly the one who built his house upon a rock, right? He must have done his calculation because a rock foundation requires a whole lot more time, hard work, uh, effort compared to that of a sand. If, if you can imagine, let's let's just take a building Lego toys and building castles in the sand. If you build something on the sand, it's easy because you have everything there. You just scoop up the sand and make the shape. But when you build Lego, it's not. You need to have imagination. You need to have the right cube that goes with the right size, and then it just builds up. And because the house project is such a mega project, uh, that is one that is built for long-term needs and security and shelter, it makes all the sense that, uh, that it should be done in the proper manner, it should have a good foundation. And so, looking at the action of the unwise builder, the, the foolish builder is, it can be implied that, that he did not give much thought to its longevity. That means whether it will last, whether it will stand the test. And so, our Lord says, inevitably, the wise man's house stood the test of the storm, whereas the foolish man's house did not. And so, our Lord gives us, uh, draws a lesson for us in this. He says this, in verse 24, he says, uh, in verse 26, he says, Whoever heareth this sage of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which builds his house upon a rock. And then verse 26, he says, And everyone that heareth this sage of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So, my dear brothers and sisters, there are always two kinds of people when it comes to the word of God and its response. Both hear, but one responds in the right way and the other do not. We all can recognize this famous uh, Changi Airport Tower. Then you can see a plane that is flying by. The Changi Airport Tower is not just for show. It controls the air traffic. And so uh, the, the pilots Right? Uh, either they're going to land the plane or to take off. They need to get specific directions, commands from this command center. And only by following that command can they either land the plane safely or take off safely. If they try to act smart, then it will be a disaster. So the Lord say, like this, says, everyone who is wise will listen to what I say and do it. And everyone who is not wise will do otherwise. So the immediate, if I, immediate context of the Lord's teaching are found in uh, Matthew chapter 5 to verses 7, uh, the Sermon on the Mount and the extension of his teachings. As I mentioned earlier, we already covered all this. And so the Lord has taught many things, right? From the blessing sermon saying, blessed are the poor, uh, blessed are the meek, and so on. And then he goes on to talk about teaching about anger management, uh, having a higher kind of righteousness, uh, seeking God's first, and uh, uh, or being careful about possessions, fasting, prayer, and so many more teachings. So in the uh, immediate context, this is what Jesus is saying, if any man listens to my sayings. The broader context, of course, will be the whole counsel of God in the Bible from the Old Testament to the New. Because 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God for our spiritual benefit, for our connection, 
for our correction, for our uh, edification, and so forth. And so, being Christians, coming to church then, my dear brothers and sisters, a responsibility is laid upon us that we, it is our duty to both listen and to do what is preached and taught to us. And that is what a wise person will do. See, my dear brothers and sisters, God loves us so much that He has given us His word. God has long-term plans for us, for our soul. So He has given us His eternal word. And when it is a long-term project upon our souls, surely, surely it be wise for us to take heed to what is being said to us, what is being taught to us. The famous saying goes, Rome was not built in a day. So we, when we're walking with the Lord, when we are building our lives in God, it is not going to be an overnight thing. It is going to be a long, tedious process. And our Lord wants us that whatever we are building, okay, whatever we are building, when I say building, is whatever we are pursuing, whatever we are are making whatever we want to do, whatever we are aiming to do, whatever we are seeking after in our life, okay, in terms of our family, future, work, study, uh, even ministry, and anything and everything within that bracket, okay, anything and everything within that bracket, right, um, will, we must remember, will in due time be put to test will in due time face the storm test, the raging storm, the wind, and the, the rising clouds. It will better us. It will, it will better us uh, day and night. And it will better us um, in the mind, in the body, and in the spirit. It will be challenged. Sometimes it will be so unabating uh, for a period of time. Sometimes is all of a sudden and then it's gone like a sudden flash flood. Uh, sometimes it's periodic. Uh, most times it catches us off oh guard. We're doing something, we're just going on in our life, coming to church, um, uh, doing our deals and all that. Suddenly things get rough in our lives. And sometimes it comes with a warning. We can see something is going to come out. And, uh, but whatever it is, the test is sure to come. We cannot expect to sail through life without any test. Even though we are God's children, we cannot expect to sail through life without any test. So our faith will be tested. Our faithfulness, uh, our obedience, our trust in God, our loyal, loyalty, our love, our discipleship, everything that we have heard, we taught in, will be tested. And when we stop and analyze what our Lord is warning us of, we see His love and care for us. Because He is giving us an early warning to prepare us for what is to come. And the one who prepares is one who is wise. Remember the, the parable of the uh, five foolish virgins and the five wise ones, right? When they were getting ready to receive the the groom, uh, the bridegroom, uh, the foolish ones thought uh, they can make do with what they had the oil, but the wise ones they had they had reserved oils to carry them through. And so, who is wise? Who is wise? Right? Who is wise? Wise is one who listens to the word of God. Dogs. My sister Kanye, she has a pet now. Dogs, they perk up the ears whenever they hear something. The ears are so, so sharp. Who is wise? It is he that gives ear to the Lord's teaching. 
and do accordingly, no matter how hard it is and how long it takes. No matter how hard it is and how long it takes. So if, if we do then, however we are battered by the storm of life, whether it has our physical life, our emotional life, or our spiritual life, we will stand strong. On the other hand, if we just listen and choose not to do accordingly, then when the time of testing comes by way of the ferocious storm, it shows no mercy and prejudice. When it's done with us, we know what we have built will have such a great collapse that it will be hard to recover from it. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus to Peter just before he was crucified. Lord said, Peter, Satan has asked me permission that he may sift you. Sift is an action where they take um, a, 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 a witch stalk and, and start to pound on the floor. So the Lord wants us that we will be better like that. Of course, when we talk about buildings and builders, uh, we may say uh, 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 it, it is obvious that none of us are builders here. We are not really building a physical building. Uh, we look at us, we are students, we are workers of different professions. Uh, on top of that, some of us are married, some are single, some are parents, some are children. Yet in one way or another, we are actually building something for ourselves, for our families, and even for our church. So the question we need to ask is, how are we going about it? Is my foundation for whatever I'm building, Jesus and His Word? Am I listening to Him and making the right building decision? Am I submitting to His counsel and applying it in my life in my life building projects. Doing so, our Lord says, is being wise. And stability and success is guaranteed with it no matter. You read Joshua chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. Just before Joshua is, is embar uh, embarks on a leadership role, our Lord says, This is what you need to do meditate, obey, keep at it, turn right, turn either right or left. Keep straight and you'll be, well, you'll be successful. You, you, the work of your hand will be blessed. If whatever we are building, you are building in your life, is costing you your time, energy, just because you are doing it by submitting to the Lord's words, it's a cost, my dear brothers and sisters, worth incurring. For it will surely reap benefits later. But if we want to avoid the cost, we want to take shortcuts to build whatever we are building, though it may be achieved at a shorter time and even uh, a certain moment of success, be sure that it will eventually cost us much more in losses. We see people compromising on the cause of discipleship to make a quick gain in life in terms of marriage, in terms of career, in terms of finance, in terms of parenting, and even church ministries. Sadly, Many a house, the buildings of these people have collapsed. So let's be warned, my dear brothers and sisters, let us hear the word of our Lord this evening. So let us build it right. Let us build it. The Lord bless understanding. So let's now learn, rise, for the closing period. Hope is built on nothing else.
Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word this evening. Oh Lord, teach us that we be hearers and doers of your word, that we may do right whatever we are doing. Thank you that we can come before thee with our offerings too. We bless it. We bless each and every one. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, welcome to this evening service. Pray uh, no further announcements to make. Just uh, be safe and uh, keep on another prayer. Lord bless you and have a blessed week. The service is